Hi, this is Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to be looking at something different, but still related to the fountain pen hobby. We're going to be taking a look at some of the different papers that you may use with your fountain pen and ink. As with fountain pens, you don't need to have the most expensive pen and the most expensive inks to write really nicely. What you need is a pen and an ink that works for you. And the same goes for paper. Don't just pick a paper because it's expensive. F explore, find a paper that works for you. Today, we're going to look at eight different papers that I've been using. We're going to try them with three different pens and inks and then we'll have a quick look to see how they all work. So join me now down on the mat and we'll jump in to the first paper. So welcome down to the mat. First thing I'm going to do is introduce you to the three pens and inks that we're going to be using in these tests. The first one is a Pen BBS 487. This has got a medium nib. In here, I'm going to be using Colorverse Supernova ink. So a really nice saturated blue ink. My second pen and ink is a Twisby VAC 700R. This is the Iris edition. This has got a broad nib. Into here, I'm going to be putting Van Diemen's Twilight Mist and using that so less saturated, but a still a nice vibrant color. Then my third pen is a Twisby Eco. This one's got a fine nib and in here I've put Van Diemen's Devil Black. So a really saturated black ink which should hopefully push most of the papers. So let's jump into it with paper number one. This, well, it's just good old plain 80 GSM printer or copy paper. I'm going to now move the mic so it's close to the paper so you can hear the writing and we're going to start with a pen BBS. We'll check for wetness. So immediately it's already starting to dry off. And now I'm going to wait 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, not surprisingly, it's dry. Pen number two. Well, that's a smoother nib to write with, but as you can hear, it's still fairly noisy on this paper. Let's do our wetness test. So this is immediate, and then we'll go for 20 seconds. Again, not surprising, that's dry. The final pen is that Eco. You know, definitely a scratchier writer, but again, it's a fine nib. And our wetness test. Then wait in 20 seconds. And again, another dry ink. Let's have a look over the top. Here we are, we're on the other side. Well, all of these inks have bled through. You can really see them there. So if you're gonna be using this paper, unfortunately, you can only use one side. Is there any feathering? Well, I can see little bits, but nothing really major. And if I'm writing notes just for me, well, it's sort of livable. So say the downside, you can only use one side. Paper number two. Well, this one is a slightly thicker paper. It's still a copy paper, but it's 100 GSM. This particular brand is J Burroughs. 
It does cost more than that eight JSON paper, but let's see, does it make a difference when it comes to writing with a fountain pen and ink? So as before, pen number one. And our wetness tests definitely looks wetter already. Let's try for 20 seconds. And it's dry after 20 seconds. Now the broad nib. And our wetness, then 20 seconds. And again, another dry one. Final one, fetching the black ink. Then wetness, 20 seconds. And after 20 seconds with this, we've still got a little bit of wetness in there. Let's turn it over. Well, this is definitely different than the other one. You can faintly see it, but you could use the other side of this paper if you really wanted to. Although to be honest, I wouldn't really push it because as I say, you are getting a little bit of that text showing through. In terms of feathering, this one doesn't seem to feather as much. I certainly can't see anything at the moment. The writing experience is definitely smoother. It definitely does feel smoother, but the paper itself feels smoother anyway. So I don't know how much is the paper and how much is the extra thickness, but certainly does look nicer. And the inks are all slightly wetter on this 100 gram paper. Paper number three. Well, this one is a bog standard notepad, uh, a Spirits one. This is 60 GSM paper. Let's open it up. So it's a reporter style notepad. Let's go for pen number one. And our wetness again. Looks a lot wetter than on the copy papers. 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, well, this one hasn't dried fully yet. Pen number two. Right, let's try our wetness. And then for 20 seconds. And again, more or less dry. There's a little tiny bit coming off here off this top one. But other than that, yeah, that's dry. We'll fetch in the black ink. Wetness, 
and for 20 seconds. And that one, well, still wet after the 20 second mark. Let's check the other side. So with this one, look, everything's showing through really, look. I mean, you've got bleed through there, you've got ghosting all the way through. There's no way you could use the other side of this paper. Feathering. Well, looking at it, I can see some feathering here around the top of the T. There's some here on the K, so we're definitely getting some feathering on this. I also found this was the scratchiest of the papers I've tested so far. So you could definitely hear it, and I'm hoping that comes over the mic. Notepad number four. This is another reporter's notepad. And this is 70 GSM paper, so slightly thicker paper. And the wetness. and then for 20 seconds. And that one's dry again with the broad nib. and the wetness and then for 20 seconds and that again is dry now for the black ink Let's test the wetness. 20 seconds. And that one's dry after 20 seconds. Let's look over the page. So again, all of them are coming through, you know, and I would say this is even worse than it was on that 60 GSM paper. You know, you're seeing loads of the purple, the black, it, well, it's just pooling all the way through. Let's look back to the other side. You know, especially with this black here, look at all the feathering on these letters. So this one of the two reporter's notebooks, the 70 GSM is actually coming out slightly below, but this was smoother to write on. I don't know if it came over on the mic. It didn't sound as scratchy. It was definitely smoother, but when we're looking at it, it doesn't look as nice. So paper number four. We're now moving into some of the more upscale papers. So this is a notebook from Oxford and it uses the optic paper system. This is a B5 notebook. So pen number one. And our wetness. 20 seconds. So it's still wet after 20 seconds. So I'm going to do another test and this time leave it for 30. Well, it's still wet after 30. So what we'll do is we'll do another one and we'll leave it for a minute. And even after a minute, there's still wetness there. So we're already seeing a difference using this more expensive paper than using the cheaper paper. With the Twisby.
and our wetness. Now leaving it for 20 seconds. And after 20 seconds, that one's dry. I'm going to repeat this 20 second test because I had stupidly not taken the cap off the vacuum filler. So let's see if that makes a difference. So yeah, there 20 seconds, that's definitely wet now. So let this be a lesson to me and to everybody else using vacuum fillers. Make sure you loosen the top cap when you're going to do testing. Well, I'm gonna go straight now and I'm going to look at a minute. So after a minute, it's still got a little bit of wetness in there. And now we're fetching the black ink. Checking our wetness. I mean, it looks a lot wetter as well, but given the other inks, we're expecting that. 20 seconds. Look, still really, really wet. So let's jump up and go straight for one minute. And again, after a minute, it's still got some wetness there. So we're seeing a massive difference using the nice fountain pen friendly paper rather than using the copier paper or the cheaper reporter notebooks. Let's look over on the back. So here, well, we've got nothing showing through really, not even with the black, which is nice. So we can use the second side of this paper. And if we're looking here in more detail, you know, might be a little bit of feather in there, but I'm not 100% certain but certainly nothing coming through on that black or the blue. Pad number six. This is from Rodia. It's just a Rodia standard A5 pad. This one is plain paper. So we'll fetch in pen number one. And the wetness, 20 seconds. And then we'll jump up and we'll go straight for one minute. And after a minute, well, yeah, we've still got some wetness there as well. Pen number two. It's wetness, 20 seconds. So there's still a little bit of wetness there. We'll go for a minute. And again, little tiny, tiny bit here, but otherwise it's dry. Time for that black ink. So really wet on the immediate one, 20 seconds. Still wet, so we'll go for one minute. And after a minute, we're still getting a little bit of a smudge, but it's more or less dry. Let's have a look over the page. So here, you know, we've got nothing really coming through. You can tell if you're really looking that there's some writing there. 
Again, this is another one I'd be happy using both sides of this paper. What we're getting here though, compared even to that Oxford paper, we're starting to get some shading coming through. You can see it here in the blue. So on the top of the yes there, we're getting it. Maybe some here on that P and the E. And also here, we're starting to get a little bit of shading coming through. Now remember the Rody paper, it's 80 GSM, you know, but it's getting that nice little bit of shading. There isn't any sheen that I can see. The Twilight Mist is meant to be a sheen in ink, so I can't really see come anything coming through just yet. But we'll see, we've still got two notepads to test. Notepad number seven. This one is from Claire Fontaine. So this one is 90 GSM. I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to use the back page of this because this is a fresh notepad. So that leaves me the front for other things. So let's fetch it in with that first pen. And our wetness, 20 seconds. Then we'll go for one minute. Even after a minute, we've still got some wetness there. And I would say that's more so than what we were seeing on that Rodeo notepad. Pen number two. And our wetness, 20 seconds, then we'll jump up and we'll do a minute. And after a minute, well, this one's dry. Pen three, the black. Let's test our witness. 20 seconds. And then one minute. And after a minute, well, there's still a little bit of wetness to it. Let's turn that page over. So you can just about see through. You can see this writing on the other side. Again, for me, that wouldn't put me off. I'd be quite happy writing on both sides of this pad. The shading is definitely more than, than was coming through on the Rodeo. You know, here we've got it in this pen. There's more here. There's definitely more there in the S. So I can see a lot more shading coming through. You know, this G where you've got the lightness at the top, and then you've got dark and then light again at the bottom. Can't really see any sheen again. So let's move on. Our final notepad today. It's a smaller one. It's a B5 size notepad. This came from a company called Desk Bandit. And in, inside it, we've got 68 GSM Tom I River paper. This is a really handy size because in there, I keep my list of everyday carries that I've got for each month. So if you watch my other videos, you may have seen these being listed already. So it's handy because it sits in my pen case. So again, working from the back because obviously I'm using the front. and testing our wetness. You know, 
you expect it's Tomo River paper. 20 seconds. Then one minute. And after a minute, wow, still wet. Pen number two. Wetness, 20 seconds, then one minute. After a minute, still a little bit of wetness left in that one. Moving on to our final pen, the black. Let's look at our wetness. You know, no surprise, we've seen what the other ones have been doing. 20 seconds. And finally, one minute. And again, still got some slight wetness to it. Let's check through on the other side. Well, surprisingly, even for Tom I. Ripper paper, we're not seeing much coming through. Again, we've got that nice shading coming here, and certainly there's a lot more of it, but when we look at the paper type, you do expect that. I'm still really not seeing any sheen coming through on the Van Diemen Twilight Mist, but that could be because I'm under lights here and they're very bright. So that's something, again, I'll have to keep looking at. So if we summarise these tests, what we've shown is that the fountain pens will write on any paper. I mean, look, we've got this here. We've got this cheap 80 gram paper. There are issues with it. You know, we get some feathering. We get it showing through. But we've got to remember the whole idea of writing it is to get it out of your head and down onto paper. You don't need to be using the most expensive fountain pen, the most expensive ink, or even the most expensive paper to do that. You've just got to be aware of the limitations of your paper. So this copy paper, it dries really, really quickly. So it's something really handy to get a lot of ideas out quickly and not really have to worry about smudging. Whereas if you're using this Tomai River paper, you know, it looks nicer. Yes, you've got the shading. It looks really nice. And I think with the more expensive pens and the more expensive inks, and certainly the sheening inks, you're going to see a big difference. But it takes a long time to dry. So if I was writing on here, I couldn't be writing a lot and then turn straight over because the ink would still be wet. And that is a limitation which you need to be aware of. So don't let people tell you that the only paper to use is from Rodeo or Clairefontaine or some of these other big makers. It's down to you. Look at your budget, same as with your fountain pens and your inks. What can you afford? And then find out that limitation and use it. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you an idea for some papers that you may want to try. Have you got any papers that you like writing with? Why not drop them down in the comments below, share them with everyone else, and let's grow our collective pool of knowledge. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. The more people that like the video and comments, well, the better it does with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.